This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. Let me show you how to make one. Tripod mounted phone clamp. These are all over Amazon, super cheap. This one is spring loaded, two inch metal spring clamp. Most important feature is that under this rubber pad, it has a hole. We need a way to put this and this together. And ideally this could rotate all the way down so we could shoot in portrait mode. Quarter 20 machine screw. This is the size that fits most cameras. Ours is one inch long and you're gonna want one that's at least that long. Two 1032 machine screws. These are half an inch long. The length on that is important. And two matching washers. We need some dimensions off of our screws. So we got the screw shaft diameter of the 1032, screw head diameter, screw head depth, 0.135. We're in Fusion 360 and we're gonna start by inputting those dimensions we took as user parameters. Screw shaft, diameter, screw head, depth. We're gonna make a parameter for our sphere diameter. Set that at 0.75 inches. So we'll create a sphere and the diameter of this will be our sphere diameter parameter. We're gonna add a couple more parameters. Stem diameter, stem height, 0.6 inches. And now we're gonna create a cylinder. It is going to be stem diameter by minus stem height. So that's gonna be the inside of our ball head joint. And to make the outside, we're going to add a shell thickness parameter of 0.1 inches. And then we also want a gap between the ball and the shell. And we'll set it at five thousandths of an inch. So now we're gonna create another cylinder right on top of the first one. And for this one, the diameter will be sphere diameter plus two times shell thickness, because we need to take into account both sides, plus two times gap. That will be a new body. And then we're going to shell this sphere out and the thickness will be shell thickness. Now you're not gonna see anything visually if we go to section analysis, put that on the XY plane. You'll see that we now have two spheres, one inside the other with a gap in between. We need to cut off this outer sphere. So I'm going to create an offset plane and I'll pull it down. I think 0.15 inches should be good. And then we're going to use the split body tool on our outer sphere. The splitting tool will be that plane you just made. And now we can just right click and remove the bottom part of our shell. There we go, that's looking more like a ball head joint. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna organize my model a little bit, make a new component and call it the shell. And then I'll make a second component and this one will be the ball. Then I'm going to go to assemble as built joint. And for the components, I'll click the shell and the ball. The joint type is going to be revolute and the snap is going to be that line we just drew. And there we go, our shell is now rotating on our ball. Right click on it and go to drive joint, rotate it to 90 degrees. And I'm gonna use that joint to cut the slot that will allow us to rotate our ball joint 90 degrees down and get those overhead shots, full freedom of movement. So now I'm going to go to combine and it asks if I want to capture or revert component positions. I wanna capture this position because I wanna do the cut while the components are positioned just like this. So I'll capture position. The target body is the shell, the tool body is the ball and the stem, and we're going to do a cut and we want to keep our tools. If we drive our joint back, now we have a cutout where the shell can go over the stem. But if this actually rotates down, it won't be able to fit over the stem. So we need to modify this cutout a little bit I'm just going to draw some construction lines from the center and then draw a rectangle from here to here. So I'm gonna select that, right click, extrude, and pull that out so it cuts right through our shell. Currently, this cutout is a super tight fit over the ball. There's no clearance. So I'm going to select these faces, right click, and go to press pull, otherwise known as offset face. And we're gonna offset that outwards by our gap parameter. 
and now there will be a bit of space between this cutout and our stem. This stem will attach to our clamp and we're gonna use one of those 1032 screws to do that. So we're gonna create a hole on the face of this stem and we're gonna select a flat bottomed hole with threads. The size is going to be 0.19 or number 10 and the designation will be 1032. We wanna select the lower class number. This will make it a slightly looser fit. The lower that number, the looser the fit. 3D printed threads are usually really tight. We wanna use the smallest class possible and we wanna make sure that the modeled box is selected. We need a way to lock the shell onto the ball. So I'm going to create a new offset plane. This time offset it from this plane and we're gonna bring it away from our cutout. Sphere diameter divided by two plus the gap plus the shell thickness. And that will bring us right to the outside of the outer shell. And we're going to create a new sketch on that face. We're gonna create a circle that is our screw shaft diameter 1032 offset and bring it outwards by the shell thickness. Actually, that's gonna bring us past the bottom of our body. This doesn't need to be as thick as the rest of the shell. So I'll just do 0.05. We we'll use that for this. So now we can select both of these circles, right click extrude, and we want to extrude it on both sides. So we want this to come out by, I think 0.35. And then we're gonna pull the other side so it intersects with our shell. We need our 1032 screw to thread into there. So I'm gonna create a hole, and this is gonna be the exact same thread as the other one we just made. The foam clamp is gonna to mount to the shell end and we need a way for those two pieces to interface. Stem diameter, stem height, divided by two. Another cylinder on top of this one, diameter will be mount diameter and the height will be shell thickness. We don't wanna print this all as one piece. I wanna print the shell on the bottom face and if we do it in that orientation, we'll need all the support material right here. So I wanna print these as two separate components that will slot together in the top. So I'm going to select the bottom of this cylinder, pull it downwards by 0.06. I think that will be good. Cut, okay, turn the top off. Now we have a nice cutout where we can glue that mounting piece in place. And so it's a little easier to put in there. I'm gonna offset this circle outwards by our gap. That will give us a little bit of room. This needs to hold our quarter 20 screw. So I'm gonna create a new hole right on top of here. I'm gonna change our screw size still under the ANSI category to quarter of an inch, quarter 20 UNC. And again, we want the lowest class. So we have the loosest fit possible. You'll see even the loosest fit will be super tight. Beautiful. And for an extra bit of strength, I'm gonna make a fillet between these two cylinders, 0.1 inch in radius. So the ball and the shell are pretty much done. We're gonna use one of these 1032 screws to lock the shell in place. And I wanna create a knob that goes on the end of this so we can just twist it by hand. I want that knob to interface with the slots on this screw so that it has a nice secure fit. Slot width, square width, and the slot length. So let's create a new sketch on the XY plane. This circle will be our screw head diameter, 1032. Add two times the gap to that. Offset that circle outwards by the shell thickness. Then we'll extrude this outer ring upwards. Now for this part, we don't wanna go the full thickness or else our screw won't be able to go in all the way. We only need a little bit of that sticking out. And then to close this off, shell thickness. Just so we have plenty of room for this piece to slot into the screw head, I'm gonna use the press pull command again to pull all these faces inwards. Again, let's do gap times two. There we go. So this is gonna fit over the screw, but now we need something to actually grab onto and twist. Create a new sketch on here. I'll draw a circle from the center of that line. And that could be the part that we grab, but I don't think this is gonna be enough. I want this to extend to the sides. So I'm gonna click that circle, go to offset, and offset it outwards by shell thickness. Extrude symmetrically, 
and the distance will be shell thickness divided by two. If we look on the bottom here, notice how this is flat, but this is curved. So we need to do a little bit of repair work and extrude it inwards, pull it in so it all hits. And then final step, I'm just gonna add some fillets so this is more comfortable to grab. Let's try 0.05. Yeah, that looks good. All right, I think we're good to print. <laughs> 3D printed threads can be pretty tight, so sometimes they need a little help. This is the quick release plate for my tripod and the mounting screw sticks out by about one, two, three, four threads. Those are pretty much the same. Super glue activator. little super glue fillet. Perfect. Healthy amount. Just got to make sure we're lined up. Ooh, that's a perfect fit. Perfect level of resistance. Put a washer on that through our hole. Lovely. And then into our ball mount. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Look at that. That is perfect. Yep, all the way to the side. We can go all the places we can't go with a tripod. We can film from up here, over here. We can go to like anywhere we have somewhere to clamp on. We can, we can film from right there. We can put this on the door. Adjust the ball head. Look at that. In the kitchen, and if I wanna watch something while doing the dishes, there we go, right there. How great is that? We can climb it to a chair, film from portrait right from there. Anything is a tripod with this thing. So great. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in directly supporting this channel, I have an online store. One of the things you can get over there are the files to 3D print this ball head mount. I also have a Patreon page. There are some cool benefits over there, including stickers and a patrons exclusive Instagram page. I'll leave links to both of those in the description. But again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.